All right. Well, hello and welcome to the latest Leash Today uh, Talking Sport podcast. We're on multiple platforms today and we're in Joe Mallon Motors. Obviously, Leash Today are proud brand ambassadors for Joe Mallon Motors. And we're here in their lovely uh, showrooms in Port Leash where we're surrounded by Clio's and McGann's and Kajar's and uh, Coolios, as Anthony Daly calls them. And I'm very fond of their new Arcana as well. And, and their salesman, Stephen Butler, here tells me he's going to give me a, a weekend uh, spin in it some, so in the next couple of weeks. So uh, I'm joined by our uh, colleagues, Alan Hartnett and Billy O'Loughlin. Uh, we're going out on, as I said, on video and on uh, audio format, so bear with us if there's any sort of uh, hiccups along the way. Look, we're here, it's at least Senior Football Final Week, and we're going to chat about Port Arrington and Port Leash. Billy, if if you were asked at the start of the year to pick your county final pairing, I'd say this is what you would have picked. Yeah, definitely. This is, this is the most uh, has the most exciting ring to it, and... Uh, I suppose it's what the, um, the 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 fans are going to be looking forward to the most. That the two teams that you have the, the team with the most amount of wins uh, in the Leash Championship, Port Leash, uh, against the current holders, Port Arlington. So it's it it's going to sh- hopefully shape up to be a very intriguing final. Um, certainly, there's the huge excitement around for it um, throughout the province. Uh, if uh, I've been all over the the province in the last couple of weeks, and uh, you know people are really intrigued by Port Arlington and Port Leash. And, they haven't played since 1991, yeah, and, and before yeah. that, I think it was 1959. So, um, yeah, no, super, yeah. super weekend yeah. ahead. I said, Alan, we couldn't have picked. We actually, you know, we've obviously had to go through all the earlier rounds and quarterfinals and semifinals and that. But like I said, if we wanted to pick out the pairing, we wanted to see this would have been it. Um, the rivalry of this one, it's a relatively new one. As Billy said, I haven't met, haven't met in a final in, in 30 years because generally when Port Leash have been strong, Port Harlington haven't, and, and vice versa. Uh, so, Look, it's obviously it's a really you know exciting one to look forward to. But the, the rivalry for this particular era started two years ago in the semi final when it made that unbelievable game, thirteen minutes of injury time that Port Leash uh, bet Port Harrington in. Port Harrington haven't lost the match since. Yeah, yeah, haven't lost the match since. Incredible start, really. And like even what they've done in the last two championships, like they've only conceded one goal, like one goal in the last two years, and that was. Jack Cleary, who was cornerback for Ballyfin, that ended up in a position where they weren't expecting him to be, and they won that game by ten uh, points. Yeah, <laughs> so like that, they, they're just they're just absolute monsters at the back. Like they just don't concede anything, and they've gone on this run now for the last two years. And I'd say in the back of their heads, like they they probably wanted this final as well because they'll be they'll be really really up for it. Like you know, there's always been a bit of bite, even the league final. You know, like the league final was played like f- I don't know a week after they'd won the the championship, and uh, Port had a lot of lads missing, and but there was great cheering and slagging going mm-hmm. on like when they won it. So they'll, they'll definitely, you know, they'll be mad up for it. And of course, Port bet uh, Port Leash in 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 last year's championship wasn't knockout, but Port won the twenty twenty final. You know, they, they won the final, and it wasn't Port Leash to beat in the final. So I think beating Port Leash in the final would probably mean a little bit more to them. I'll tell you what we're going to do first. We're going to hear from the two managers. I was chatting to Kevin Fitzpatrick, the Port Leash manager, and to Martin Murphy during the week. And We'll hear for the two of those and we'll come back and look properly at the game in de- depth after that. Okay, so I'm joined now by Port Leash uh, manager Kevin Fitzpatrick. Uh, Kevin played, I, I actually didn't count up all the finals that Kevin played in, but I know he has a bag full of medals and bag full of final appearances and the whole lot. Uh, Kevin, uh, first of all, have any injury worries for Port Leash this week? What way are you shaping up? No, we have a full squad to, to pick from, thank God. So no injuries. We had a few little niggles coming up to the Ballerone game and lads just got through it, thank God, and there's been nothing since, so we're, we're all good to go on Sunday. Yeah, clean, clean bill of health. Um, so this is your second year in the in the Port Leash job, so you've had two sort of COVID-disrupted years, but when the Port Leash job came up straight initially, when back at the end of 2019, early 2020, did you have to t- do much thinking about it? I did, indeed. <laughs> yeah, um, I, was, I was approached and about it and I... I, I Initially, didn't said I wouldn't take it. Like I wanted a break from everything, and um, then I got a call from Paul Catlan one night, and kind of got called to meet a couple of the players, and um, they they kind of roped me back in towards going towards it again. So, look, when when the players of that caliber, like him here and Garrett Dillon and that, and come to you and, and ask you that they want you there, it, it's it's hard turning them down when you've been with them for so long, I suppose, in dressing rooms and training. So. Look, I knew it wasn't going to be an easy task, but but the changeover of who who had left and 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 in some ways we we were the top dog for years, and it was going to happen at some stage where where teams were going to catch up to our level. You know, it's it not it was never going to be an easy job to take over. But look, the lads came to me and decided, look, I give it a go, and I've been in it now as you said. Look, the second year is where we're at at the moment, really, with it. 
Yeah, so so like it would have been, you know, looking in from the outside, it would have been easy to sort of say, oh, jeez, I'm not going near that. I don't want to be the one that's not winning championships with them. But you did you did step up to it when when the challenge came to you. Yeah, and then we didn't win the championship. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but look, I, I, look, I know, I know from playing and being involved for so long, like it, it, it's, a, it's a really tough job management. It, 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 it's not easy, and I'm sure any other manager will tell you the same. Like playing is the best thing you can do. It's just it, that's where all the enjoyment is, and um, and I love playing. That's why I played as long as I could, and I've always said that to any lad: it's, it's play as long as you can, and, and, and hang in there, and enjoy it all. And, and then when you come out to the other side, you see a different element of the game different elements of lad personality and stuff like that as well so look it, it's not easy but look you just have to get on with it now I suppose if that's all I can do Yeah, and was it hard so obviously you were part of the panel right up until you became manager essentially you were playing intermediate so you would have been a crossover a lot of the same players was it hard like you haven't played since you became manager was that was that a hard transition yeah yeah definitely yeah I, I was still part of the panel when, when Niall was there so I would have been at all the trains and, and playing kind of intermediate at that level and then a couple of lads that I played with for many, many years all left in the one year, like Bruno left, Brian Mulligan, uh, Mickey Nolan, we we all kind of left that one year after we won in 2019. So that core group of fellas that I played with for 10, 15 years all went in the, in the one year. So it, it, it wasn't easy to step away, but I suppose when we were all doing it together, it kind of yeah. made it a bit easier then, you know? Yeah. Um Last year, oh sorry, first of all I'm going to ask you about your backroom team. So obviously I see you there at all the matches and like I'm, I'm looking at this star-studded Port Leash management team. You have Bruno McCormack, Pat Critchley, Paul Cotter is which I might be missing out on one or two. I know Owen Delaney is involved in the background there. Yeah, and but, my brother David. Pat and, and your brother well, David yeah. as well, yeah. So wh- what's everyone's role? Well, everyone does a bit of everything to be yeah. honest with you. Like, you know, only for them, like, I'm just labelled the manager but like it, it's six of us to make decisions and everything we, we make decisions and so we make, make decisions on picking team of what we do in training video work all that stuff and stats you know it, 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 it wouldn't, we wouldn't be where we are without those five lads in the background really you know and like to have the likes of Pat involved with us it's just amazing um, and I, I just hope lads realise how lucky they are to have them involved with us over the last year year and a half you know it's it just it's amazing to see them at work yeah, what is like? Obviously, we're all aware of Pat Critchley and he's you know a legendary, you know a legendary reputation as a coach and in motivator and that. What what is it he like to work with, or what are his what's what's so good about Pat Critchley when he's stuck in the middle of it? You just can't. I couldn't put a finger on one yeah. exact thing. Like his enthusiasm is probably the main thing that you would get from it. Like he just every time he goes up there, he's just enthusiastic about what he does. Like we we trained a couple of months ago on a Sunday morning. He was he walked over to us after doing a session with the um, the nursery the kids. Uh, so he did a session with them. Came over and trained with us, the senior footballers. Finished up with the senior footballers. Went on with the minor hurlers, you know. And like the club really are lucky to have the jewel that is Pat Critchley with us. To be honest, with you. you know you wouldn't see that in many many places. And to have that level of ability to mix between the different age groups and, and incorporate what he tries to do is just it's just amazing to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah God, it really is, is incredible like I suppose and that longevity is around so long and both codes and everything and is, is it is it, is it his, his drills his games is that what sort of stands out when, when he is involved? Yeah, yeah it's just drills and I said like he would spot things and straight away he just pinpoint where things are going wrong or where things are going right he, and he picks out a lot of stuff that's going right to be honest with you so he gives a lot of lads a lot of confidence say look you're doing this well keep doing this keep trying this you know so that, that's just really it's, it's good to see him in action that way it's not negative stuff yeah. a lot of it is, is mainly on the positive side of stuff so yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I obviously fascinated everyone. I've never heard anything but bad words about Critchley. He's such engaging company, and that as well when you do meet him. So just just, just interested in that side of it. Uh, last year, how disappointing was last year? You know, you you lost twice. You didn't make a semi final, and like you're, you're just not used to that. No, no. Look, last year was just, it was just a total different thing. Like uh, as me taking over, I suppose it was two weeks. I think before. Covid kind of kicked in, you know that yeah. that I, I decided to to be the manager really, and everything just changed. You know the whole scenario of dressing room facilities, trying to arrange sessions like you're you're sending stuff out in Zoom, and in fairness, like all the lads were brilliant. Like we sent out sessions, and I go out and meet them. And we're doing runs in the woods and runs around the leisure centre down there. That's all we could do because we know football, you know. So to keep lads interested was the hardest thing, and but all of them bought into it. You know, last year really did, and. Uh, Getting back to the football field, then we were only I think 
mid June, I think, when everything you were kind of back to normal, being able to go to the field. But you're still you're still trying to develop a team and create a team bond, and you still didn't have dressing rooms. And I think it's a massive thing to have that, like to be able to just go in and sit in with your friends and have a chat and be in whole, that whole environment. We we just couldn't couldn't get that. And look, things didn't go right for us against Port Arms, and Port Arms got on top of us, and, and we we couldn't get them back. Against Emo, we played actually well for 30 minutes, just couldn't score, and then they, they played well for the next 30 minutes. It was a shock and the worst weather, I think, yeah. of the whole year. But the conditions, you just have to stick to the conditions that are there. They're there for both sides, and, and they came out on top, unfortunately, that day. Yeah, and, and you must have been, like, to get such a bad start, and this year you were beaten by Courtwood in the first round. Like, that was obviously a, a tough one to take, I'm sure, at the time, too. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, it was difficult because like, we, we, we were kind of couldn't understand. We were going well at the time and challenging matches and, and training was going okay. And it's just one of those days where where, where they got one over us. And like, you know, their, their, their tactics kind of worked. We we couldn't score. We didn't convert the, the chances that we had. Now, that was then putting us under pressure a lot of it, in fairness to them. But And then we were out of out, out, out the main championship. And the next game, look, we were... 30 minutes away from, from going to a relegation fight like you know so look the lads have fought through every game since that and I can't fault them for that we're now at the other end of the scale where we're, we're 60 minutes away from, from being the champions which is amazing after after being in that position at the start Yeah, because you have picked it up like, like you've had to come through some fierce battles like Ballyfin, Joseph, Odemsey's all pulled it up to you but you came out the right side every time like that's not a coincidence I don't think no, no. Look, I think like th- th- we have a good core of lads who are experienced and they know how to get through games. Like we probably won championships over the last ten years where we haven't performed to the best of our ability, but lads have fought on their backs to win those medals. You know, that's that's the that's the way they are. They're, they just have that built into them, and the, the younger generation coming through hopefully see that and, and start to learn from that and and then pick up on it and, and move things on themselves then as well. Um, but look, you, you couldn't fault them how they've got over the, the few hurdles to get to where we are right now Yeah, and and it must have been very satisfying then to give such a good performance the last day against Belly Rowan because it probably was the best performance you've put in in the two years you've been involved oh yeah look as I said before 100% it, it was the best we played um, it was one of those days where we performed to the highest one of our highest levels we could and Belly Rowan just didn't nothing went right for them so the, like the, the scoreline doesn't reflect the difference in the teams I don't think at all it's just one of those days where everything clicked for us and nothing clicked for them, you know. Yeah, yeah, and you're, it's a good way to be coming into the final in in many respects. But like, Port are our champions. They're obviously a fer- very strong team at the moment. But uh, you, you're looking to end the, the one year famine. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, please God, look, they're they're favourites, and, and no question to be favourites. They're, they're, they're county champions. They're league champions. They've they've beaten us twice uh, in the last two years in the league final and the championship. So look, at, it's up against us. We have a we have a tough tough battle next Sunday. Yeah, yeah, but you're looking forward, obviously, to you know county final is something. It's, it's as I said, it's not new to you, Kevin. Look, you've been very good with your time, and I want to wish you the best of luck on Sunday. And we'll probably talk to you afterwards, win or lose. Kevin Fitzpatrick, Port Leash manager. Thanks, thanks again. Now joined uh, today by Martin Murphy. Martin, it seems no Lent since we uh, Port Arlington manager since we were chatting after you won the 2020 final, but it is no Lent to go because it was only in August. Um, first of all, how are the Port lads shaping up? Have you any injuries or any absentees that we should know about? Oh. No, we no no concern, Stephen. To be honest with you, um, we're we're happy enough. Things are, are ticking over nicely, and we're we're heading into the into Sunday's game with a clean bill of health. And um, as I say, you know, it's it's been it's been a long five months since uh, we we started to build up into the into the championship for 2020, and this just seems to be going on forever and ever. So. Lads are really looking forward to getting 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 to the game on Sunday now, and uh, hopefully bringing it to a, a successful conclusion. Yeah. Uh, what what was it like going straight back into the the championship only a couple of weeks after winning the twenty twenty final? It's a you had to you had a huge high, but you had to come down very very quickly. Yeah, that's true. You know, we we we've I suppose we had we had the league the three league games and a league semi final as preparation for the twenty twenty semi final and final which which we, we, we thought was, was was very suitable to us. But um after winning the final naturally and, and having waited for so long to win win a county title, uh there, there was an element of celebration that went on and you know, you can't blame that for that and it's you know, and then you're 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 led into a, a three week lead into um 
the first round of, of the 2021 championship so it, it was difficult and it still is a small bit difficult to, to keep players motivated in a sense that you, you have two championships really crammed into a, a 12 or 13 week period how do you feel you've been going? Like he scraped over Ballyfin in the first game. That was your your tightest match. You haven't been setting the world on fire since, but you've been comfortable enough in all the games, all the same. No, look at we we haven't been setting the world alight, and 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 I put it down to really you know there's there's a certain amount of mental fatigue uh, apart from everything else that people have to get used to playing football at this time of the year, and and on top of having the the elation of winning the championship twelve or thirteen weeks ago. Um, it, it has been difficult I suppose psychologically it, it, it does affect lads in one sense that are not accustomed or used to this whereby our opposition on Sunday now would be fairly accustomed to playing football in, in the month of November and December in, in the club championship over the year so you know it's been difficult for us but you know we're, we're delighted we're back in, in, in a final without setting the world alight and hopefully we've saved, saved our best to last yeah, one thing I've been impressed with. Uh, I know the last day against uh, Emol was in dreadful conditions. He's, he had won by six points. To her. It was it was open to being sort of with a sucker punch goal going into the last five or six minutes, but you did win it. You won by six points in the end, and your backs again like no goal conceded in this year's championship. No, no, our, our backs have been have been impressive. That's for sure, and and uh, you know he, he, throughout the, the, the I think the semi final against um, uh, was it against Balifin. Oh, the 2020 one. semi-final yes, yeah. against Ballyfin yeah, yeah. That, I think that's the only goal we've conceded in the championship since then so look at we, we've we've played five games five games since then and not conceded a goal but uh, having said that that's down to, to the, the determination of, of our, our, our our players in defence and they've been they've been awesome like in you have to look at at the team as it lines out. You know, your players caliber of of Colin Slevin, who's 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 a, every bit as good a back, and maybe would find his place in any other team in the county. Um, Jason Moore is away overseas. There's another back that could be in there. So, like we've had we've had great um, competition for for positions in the back line, and uh, I think that's that's drove, driven lads on to to perform to the best of their ability and. The, there's a sense of pride in, to, in in each and every one of them too to try and keep the score at a minimum. Yeah, Port Leash in a final is as as, as big a challenge as a club can have in a fi- in, in Leash. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Like in fairness to Port Leash, uh, they they haven't gone away, and and people write them off at their perils. So you know we have the height and the utmost respect for Port Leash and Sunday, and uh, they, they still have got you know the the fantastic players, great leaders in there. There's a um, huge experience. That, very experienced in their backroom team and all of the five or six people involved in the backroom team that have collectively would have more medals than Port, Port Hain put together uh, from, from the 2020 championship so I look at uh, yeah we're we're, we're um, we'll be respectful of Port Leash and we, we know what they bring to the party and uh, hopefully we can just maybe shade it on Sunday yeah. Um, If you win you do win it's a chance to play in the Leinster Club something you didn't get last year have you been looking up the fixtures? No, other than other, I, you know, there has been, I believe, talk that people are saying that Asher Port Harrington are only, you know, looking towards the, the club championship. No, we, we haven't, and we, we haven't, we haven't looked any further than each game as, as, as it came to us. So we, we haven't really, I've been told the club championship draw for the release championship, I think it's Westmead, the Westmead champions. So, um, and, and I would have known that only we played St. Lomans in the challenge game a few weeks ago, and, and I was talking to Declan Kelly and, he would say we, 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 uh, we, we'll hope to meet again maybe the two of us he says later on in the in the club championship but look at that's that's uh, looking too far ahead for me and uh, as I say I prefer to keep people's feet on the ground now and, and look towards Sunday and, and uh, hopefully hopefully do ourselves justice yeah. and uh, I'm sure Joe Dwyer has probably been reminding you he's a great historian that like uh, Port won the championship twice in the same year before and, and you're now just one game away from doing it it would be a, a nice way to wrap up uh, this Covid uh, these two Covid seasons oh, well it certainly would and you know it, it would be history repeating itself from Port Harrington's perspective but uh, you know Balakala has done it now already in terms of the hurling. So, you, you know, that, I, I, again, won't be reading too much into that. And as I said, hopefully uh, we, we our, our minds are focused solely on winning the 21 championship now and, and we put the 20 championship behind us. Um, and hopefully we can hold on to hold on to the, to the, um, the Jack Delaney Cup.
Yeah. Look, Martin, you've been very good with your time, and I want to wish you the best of luck on Sunday, and we'll, we'll hopefully chat to you afterwards, win or lose. Martin Murphy, Port Arrington manager, thanks very much for joining Right, us. so that was the two managers. Uh, very, very good stuff from Kevin Fitzpatrick. Um, really, you know, he was sort of saying that when he got offered the Port Leach job initially, he didn't want to take it on, and he was convinced to take it on. Then he was over them last year. Obviously, his first year COVID disrupted year, bet by Port Arrington, knocked out by Emo, bet by, Port, bet by Courtwood in their first game this year. He really couldn't have uh, got off to a worse start in, in Port Leach circumstances. But they're back in the final, and I know he has Pat Critchley as part of his backroom team. And Critchley has a great saying in his book where he says, "Port Leach don't lose finals. Like they, they do lose some finals, but they tell themselves they don't. And it's that sort of club culture will will play into their hands this week, won't it? Yeah, it certainly will. And like having won probably what fourteen or fifteen of the last sixteen titles, um, you know they won't fear Port Arlington. And you know, uh, Kevin uh, speaking there, he 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 has certainly a huge amount of experience having played with Port Leach for you know his entire career, and probably he has ten or eleven. Prob- 10 championships I'd say and um, you know that experience on the sideline will probably count uh, account a huge amount for for, um, for Port Leash on Sunday and you know they won't they won't they won't fear Port Arlington as I said and uh, look they haven't been beaten in many finals I know the, uh, the, the 2016 one was a, a bit of a, a, a bit of a hiccup for them along along that road but um yeah, and uh, getting back to the, the point on, on, on the Port Leash management, like, I mean, Bruno is there as well. He he has, I think, 13 championships in total. So, look, they've a wealth of experience. Uh, Owen Delaney, Sean Cotter, Pat Critchley. Um, so, there's, look, there's some great heads there that will have, you know, they'll have Port Arlington um, well sussed out. And I'm sure they've a lot of video analysis done and they'll have seen Port Port Arlington in the last few rounds, and they'll know, you know, exactly where they can be, um, where they can be a, a, a hit and, and hit hard, and and it'll be, you know, it, it will be down to, I suppose, a couple of points. Um, on Sunday, and we were, as we were saying earlier, like this could be a ten eight or a, a nine nine seven type of game, um, particularly with the c- conditions and this time of the year as well. So you know it it, it bodes well for a good uh, a good contest anyway. And um, you know Kevin, I suppose we said a couple of weeks ago, Kevin was was given the job, and uh, people were saying that Port Leash were on the way, and and uh, you know you'd never I'd never agree with that anyway, and. Um, you know, they certainly had a couple of lads that were in and out. It was a bit of transition, but he has them back in the final. And and they seem you know, to have settled the on the team. team. They seem to have settled on the team the last couple of games, Alan. Like you were sort of poor mountain of there the whole way through the championship. They obviously lost the court, would scraped past Ballyfin, scraped past St Joseph's, and he beat with MCs in extra time. And then they were unbelievable against Ballyroan the last day. They're they're coming into form. And like as someone said to me, it was, I know the conditions. It was a funny day the last semi final. The first game was played in more or less ideal conditions. The second game was played at a mod soon. And uh, someone said to me at half. Times that Port Leash should beat the pick of those two teams, which I thought was a bit harsh, but there is a sort of a different order about Port Leash when they get to a final. Yeah, well, I suppose the, the biggest problem they had all year, league final, all the early rounds of the championship, was their whites. They were hitting double figure whites in every single game, and that happened throughout. It even happened in the quarter final. They, they just kept missing their chances over and over again. In the semi final, it clicked. They had one wide in the first half and had 11 points scored. I think they had 14 shots on goal. Um, it, they solved it and away they went. It was it was very simple. Once once they stopped uh, hitting their wides, the whole thing turned around for them. And like they, now that's only one game. There's no guarantee that they won't revert back to that in the final. And um, because they'll be under more pressure, Ballyroan would have been very disappointed with how they played. Like they didn't put them under any sort of pressure. They tried to play a game of containment, but they never pressed them. So they, they got men back behind the ball and they got into a shape. But within the shape, then, you have to press from, from those areas to put pressure on players to have the ball. And they never did that. Yeah. So like that won't happen with Port Harlington. Like they, they will press them. Yeah. They will get back behind the ball in numbers, but they'll press them from there yeah. as well. So it'll be different. Port Leach will be under more pressure when they are trying to, to, trying to take their scoring opportunities. But if they do convert like they did, they'll have a great chance. But I remember we did a preview for um, round three. And we were saying the way round three is sort of a, a weird round because everybody has lost one game. I think you were saying to me, like, is there any of them would have any chance of, <laughs> of getting, to the, getting to the final or winning it? And they were the only team that I thought did because they were creating all these chances and not taking them. And they did the last day, so they have to do that again in the final because they won't get away with hitting double figure wides. If they hit double figure wides, they will lose. Yeah, and on the opposite thing, Port Arlington, Billy, sort of have this 
you know, they were, okay, the two weeks after the, lo- the one last year's final, or the 2020 final, and they were so impressive in the semi-final and, and final of 2020. They had that incredible high, because he went off on holidays to Spain, they came back. Re- getting back up to a high again is, is difficult, and Martin Murphy chatted about that in his interview, but like, they, they bet Ballyfin in the first game, they hammered court in their second game, and they were comfortable then against Stradbally, comfortable against Emo. In their ne- I know Emo hung in, but like, Port could have won that game by as much as as Port Leach bet Ballyroan, uh, but they just they, they missed everything that day, like you know. So I don't know. Are, are Port are po- have Port regressed? I, I don't think they've come on. I I, like I, like they obviously were a level ahead of everyone last year, but have they come back enough for Port Leach? You're 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 sweet on Port Leach. Yeah, uh, that's just you know from based on form, but maybe they've stagnated a small bit, Port Arlington. But look. They, uh, Ronan Coffey, I suppose, the last day was, was taken off, substituted, didn't have his best performance. You know, there's a big game in him. Rian Murphy uh, uh, as well, he didn't cover as much ground usually as he would. Um, he, he, he had a phenomenal county final. I think he was man of the match, covered every blade of grass. And, you know, they'll be looking for himself and Adam Ryan, Ronan Coffey, to get on more ball, um, really attack the Port Leash half-back line and, and try and create, c- continue to create the chances that that they created against Emo. Now, they didn't take most of, they didn't take a lot of the chances against Emo and that, that could be a downfall for them as well because you know your conversion rate once you get up there inside the the scoring zone has to be you know it has to be well over 50 60 percent um particularly in finals as well and um you know with colin murphy in that and and david murphy in around the square you know they have a great chance but it's about creating those chances again and i just don't think port leash will cough up as much chances as as emo did in the in in the semi-final um a lot of it too will come down to the midfield in pairing as well uh, we we have I suppose Sean Byrne down to Mark Kieran Lillis and and Bracken then on 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 um, McAvoy. So look, that's probably where the pendulum will swing, and and uh, whoever wins the middle of the field, you could say will 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 be set up. I know that's a, a, cli- a kind of a cliched analysis um, on any game you can you can look at, but if you, if you go on on form and you know on. I suppose insider information. Uh, if you knew uh, all the teams that are in the Leeds Championship, that those two pairings are, are are the best midfield in the in the championship. Yeah, yeah and uh, one thing I've been consistent about in Port Leash, Alan, is that like the spine of their team, I've been very impressed with. And obviously, Graham Brody could be back for the final, and I don't, you know, Michael O'Connell very unfortunately got injured so early in the last one. But Brody hasn't played in a couple of championships for Port Leash. Back now, he can't play the last day. He may start this week. But if you include that from from the goalkeeper up, Frank Flanagan fullback, Gary Saunders centre back, Lillis and McAvoy midfield, probably Gareth Dillon or Boyle centre forward, and maybe someone like Paul Cahalan or, or or Damon Larkin or Benny Carroll full forward. Like the spine of that team is incredibly strong. Uh, what what um what matchups would you be most looking forward to? I think like both teams are defensively very strong, and it goes back to what Billy said at the start. Like it, it could easily be ten seven. Or do you the, you had the piece on the ninety one final, final yeah. seven five seven five low scoring final in the last seventy years. Wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't shock me if it was something like that because both defenses are just savage. Like you look at the you look at the matchups that could potentially happen, and you have the likes of at the back for Portlaoise, Gary Saunders, Ben Dempsey has emerged mm. as a really really good man marker and someone that looks like he has a huge future ahead. Like he was playing minor. This time last year, he was getting ready to play in a Leinster minor semi-final against me. It was like a week before Christmas. Mm-hmm. So it, it, the progression from him from there is has been brilliant because it's hard in Portlaoise to break into these teams as a minor. It hasn't happened in, over the last couple of years, and, and he's done that, and he's been very good. And he's often been tasked with some of the yeah, better he's forwards. Yeah, yeah, he's been putting good lads, yeah. And he's done well. Yeah. So like he's a guy that will do well. Be, uh, Gary Saunders, as I, sa- as I said, will do. Frank Flanagan is another very good man marker as well. But on the other end, like you'd probably have the best full back line that you could possibly have. Y- y- if they went and out and played with Leash, you'd have no complaints. Alex Moe and Cahill Bennett and Dermot Bennett, I very rarely see any of them getting beaten by their, by their opposing player. Very rarely. The two cornerbacks in particular are just class. The blocks they make, the positions they take up, They've lost uh, Jason Moore. Huge loss. Hu- huge a, loss, though, to be fair. They Paddy O'Sullivan. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they didn't have Paddy at all last year when, or when they won the championship a couple of months ago. So, like, they still have Robbie. They still have Stuart Mulpeter there as well. That half-back line is class. But the, the problem they had against the Emo, their whole half-hour line was taken off. That's the first time that they probably haven't clicked in two years. Rion, Murphy, Adam Ryan and Ronan Coffey were all substituted before the end of that game that will be a concern for them because if they don't click, it will be difficult for them. Yeah, the one thing, uh, Billy, I'll be looking at, I think if, uh, I'd make Port favourites. I think Port, I, I'm going to go for Port, I don't know what way you're uh, coming down on it at the moment, but 
I think Port have to target Kieran Lillis and they have to target Garrett Dillon. If, if they can, and I do think they have, like, Lillis has probably been the best club footballer in Leash for the last 10 years. Garrett Dillon probably up there, you know, the same, they've been incredible servants for Port Leash. But I do think Port have the raw materials to target those two guys. And if they, they sort of nullify them, like, they're not going to completely take them out of the game. But if they nullify them, I think Port Leash might struggle elsewhere. And I think Port's defence, like, they've conceded four points against Emos, eight points against Stradbury. Did even Stradbury nine points against court but they're not conceding goals and if I think they can keep the score down you know I, I'd fancy I do think, I do agree with you that it'll be low scoring but uh, I think if they can take those two guys out and target them I think I think it, it swings Port's way Yeah certainly like it, it'd take a lot to disorientate Kieran Lillis now some of the hits he was taking the last day and that and he kicked two super points from play and you know I haven't played against him on numerous occasions in the county finals he, he's a man to play in county mm-hmm. finals and he's such a big presence around the middle of the yeah. field with McAvoy that um, you know Port Arlington will have to I suppose they'll have to keep on their case for, for, for the, the, the 60 or 65 minutes but uh, the Port Leash half forward line uh, I, I, I can see lining out Ronan McAvoy Damon Larkin and Garrett Dillon like Port Leash scored 117 the last day McAvoy got 4 or 5 points um, Dillon got 3 points early in the first half and Damon uh, Larkin was probably a bit quieter than usual and, and came into it certainly near the end but they're scoring threat as well and I think you know Piggott Paddy O'Sullivan and Mulpeter yeah. that's a big strong hardy half back yeah. line and um, um, you know, I suppose if they're able to negate those Port Leash forwards, it'll it'll um, it'll go a long way. But you know, Lillis again, back to the point of Lillis and McAvoy, Garrett Dillon, these players that if Port Arlington are able to, I suppose, nullify uh, those guys, it'll it will set them up. But you know, it's it's easier you know, said than done, though. It's easier <laughs> said than done, and yeah, you're yeah. trying to pick it at po- pick and poke it in areas where you know one team might have a. a, 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 a bit of a benefit over the over the next and um you know one area we haven't really m- touched on an awful lot would be Brody is back in the goals and I suppose it's no fault of Michael O'Connell's the last day that he got injured early on but you know it, there's talent that comes through every every you know once in a generation and he is definitely a once in a generation talent like um you know for Leash and, and Port Leash that he he's like an extra half back. Yeah he's just <laughs> he's just he's just if you watch him closely given the player cam you know he's his his ability to read the game and set up attacks from defence you know he's excellent he doesn't he rarely puts foot wrong like no he doesn't like he's uh, he completely changed everything when he came in there his kick outs just he starting attacks all the time like as you said Michael O'Connell was unfortunate to get hurt in the first couple of minutes of the game but it presents the management now with a huge uh, question they have to pick between the two <laughs> of them now like I mean in fairness to Michael O'Connell he's been there all year um, you know, he made a couple of mistakes in some of the games but he was there all the time. He was growing into the role. He's still only... 19, 20, I'd 19, say, 20, yeah. 20, that's all he is like. So he's still only a young, a young lad who has got plenty of experience already. But uh, if it was me, I'd have to go with Graham. Yeah. Just have to, like, he was possibly one of the best score keepers in the country Did a couple of years ago. Yeah, and, and he's, like, he's so exciting to watch. Like you know. But the other thing I've noticed, like you were mentioning the half-forward line, Billy, you picked Port, Arn- or Port Leach half-forward line. You had Lark and Dylan and uh, Ronan McAvoy in the half-forward line. That's where, where does Con- Conor Boyle is mostly played across the half-forward line. But someone is going to be full forward. I think Port Leach have a sense that they would have seen Evan Costello come on at half-time for Emo against uh, Port and, and, and cause them problems. Now, I don't really buy into it that a big full forward causes uh, the Port full-back line problems because Birdie Hand was well handled by Dermot Bennett. Barney Marr... Yeah. Was well handled by Dermot yeah. Bennett, but I do know as well though that like Lillis, Kieran McAvoy, Boyle, they can sneak into that full forward line for 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 uh, five minute spells on occasion and, and rotate it. And if Lillis is in there, like he's a serious man to win ball. Yeah, yeah, they can. And and d- just from watching the, the 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 game the last day, that they had kind of a, a, a sort of a, a diamond, if you like, up top where they, they were kind of standing in between the forty five and and the twenty one, and it interchanged really with Damon Larkin and and Boyle. And uh, Boyle had a couple of uh, a couple of chances. I think he might have got two or three points, but he had a couple of wides as well. So he will get on a lot of ball as well and you know he has played in I don't know probably seven or eight or nine yeah. county finals as well he's plenty of experience um, so look their forwards I, I'd say the, the one forward that won't, probably won't change a whole lot is Cahillan he'll stay in around close to the goalkeeper close to the the, uh, the, the square um, and other than that they'll rotate them and Carl as well um, I know he was taken off late in the game the last day but he's he's only back from injury as well Carl to handle because he's yeah, so that, that dynamic game, like that yeah. game will, will have brought Carl on uh, in leaps and bounds as well so look the, the Port Leash forwards are, are equally as strong 
strong um, uh, as they have been. I, I reckon in the last couple of years, and they're only they're only uh, yeah. I, I do think they've sort of found they've sort of settled on a team now. Well, and after the last well, just we go quickly back. Uh, you mentioned the ninety one final. I read up the the previews of that, and we did, we did a piece on site. I'm not sure whether you read. Mick Lillis was training the Port Leash team at the time. I'm not sure whether he was manager, different different roles back then. But he was a half back on the team, and I'll definitely have to get an interview with Mick at some stage because he's an incredible GA career. Like played with Clare, played with Leash, retired from Clare the year before they won the Munster title in ninety two. I think he might have played with Leash in the eighties, and then did, wasn't playing when they won the league in eighty six. So he sort of had bad luck at it. Training Port Leash in ninety one, and his pre match interview. Did you read his quotes? Was yeah. absolutely. You <laughs> You absolutely <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and he was going on about how old we are, and we're got a mobile, and Port could run us into the ground. Like, like Dermot Crow was the Leicester Express reporter at the time, who is now one of the top GA writers in the Sunday Independent. I don't know how he wrote it with a straight face, like yeah. because it was. Absolutely well, he was right. They won the game, and they won the game, and I don't think I think a good few of them did retire after. It, so he was right, but he's very straight talking, and and he's serious, seriously passionate man, like and. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it and he's still managing. Like this, thirty he's years ago, managing. he's still yeah, managing he, yeah, in the league championship. He the last day with yeah. and and, and uh, you know, you can't you can't but admire his his passion for the game and for for Port Leash. Yeah, like because uh, obviously he was trained him in that ninety one. So I'm not sure how much longer he played. Well, he played ju- he played junior C right up until the mid two thousands. Uh, but he's been over so many different teams. But when Port Leash Port Leash then had an eight year famine. I joked with, with Kevin uh, Fitzpatrick that they're t- Port Leash are trying to end their one year famine without the Leash senior championship title. But in, in ninety nine, Mick Lillis was back over team. I think Kieran was mascot. He managed him again then. I managed him for a couple of years. He managed him in 13 14. And obviously, then he's managed Palatine, he's managed Lar- Lawrence's, uh, managed Leash, now with Bally Lyon. And he's incredible. We definitely have to get an interview with Mick. And he's a great character and great storyteller and that. But, gone complete. but I thought his interview before that 91 final was one of the funniest things I ever read. Like, he couldn't have got out of his way more to talk down Port Leash, talk up Port Arlington. Said they were, they were as good as the Port Leash team at the early 1980s. <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious. Uh, anyway, prediction time. Alan, we'll start with you first there. Um, ah, look, I think I've said it. All, I said it from the start. I thought Port Harrington would win it. I do think now that Graham Brody coming back does change things. But I'll stick with Port. I think they will win. But I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up in a draw and I had to go to a replay. Yeah. That wouldn't shock me either. I think it'd be very low scoring. But Port just to edge it. One player we didn't mention who I think could have a huge bearing is the highest scoring forward in on the field is Jake Foster. Oh yeah. I think he ha- could have a huge bearing on the game. He's been really good consistently in all other games, and he'd be somebody Port will have to shut down. But yeah. I just think they might have Port. Port by two. Port by two. I'm going to go uh, 111 to 11 points to oh Port Leash. Okay, right. And I think right. a goal could win it. Um, no, I know an awful lot of the, uh, an awful lot of the Port boys probably be... Uh, Billy's great like for a goal, goal could win it. Like, you're really, midfield uh, is crucial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I know I'm going to go with Port Leash. I'd, I'd say around 110 to 10 points or okay. 111 to 10 points or something like that. I just think that Port Leash, are, um, their performance the last day would is enough to say that they, they want this, uh, you know, as, yeah. as badly as uh, as they ever had. And um, But having said that, if Port if Port Arlington uh, perform like they did against Greg in, in, in di- last year's final, you know, where they blew them out of the water, um, they'll be hard stop as well. But yeah, I'm yeah. going to go with Port Leash. And you're leaving me with a cast and vote. Not like that. No, you're actually putting the pressure. I should have done the order of things a bit differently then, that your vote would have been dead. <laughs> um, and of course, like if we get it wrong, then the abuse will just be non stop. Uh, I, I think Port are going to win it. I think. Th- I think there was a big gap from Port back to the rest of them at the start of the championship. I think it has closed. I think Port Arrington have come back, and I think Port. I, I don't think Port are going as well. They haven't shown that they're going as well. Um, I think a few of their players. There could be a few little bits and pieces of injuries that we're not. You know, we don't know the full extent of. I do think one or two. I think Jason Moore is a huge loss, and I think one or two of them have come back a level. Uh, I think Port Leach have come on and saw that in the semi final, but like that semi final performance was the exception rather than the norm for Port Leach. And I do, I do think it'll be low scoring. I think, uh, I, I, I think yeah, t- nine, ten points could win it. And I think, I think actually we could be in for quite the show of sort of uh, black garden if Port get ahead and have plenty of lads that know the dark arts. Of course, the old um, black cards um, are fairly crucial. But I think if Port are ahead coming down the straight, we'll be in for for an exhibition of uh, of Ulster style football. <laughs> and I'm going for Port, Port, Port to win it. Um, you know, I wouldn't. It's very hard. Like, so you're going against Port Leash in the county final, and say you'd want to be going for the men in the white coats. But yeah. uh, the other thing, briefly, um, if the, the winners get to go into Leinster Club, they play Westmead, either your pals Lomans yeah. or Gary Castle in yeah. the Westmead final, Hopefully and Lomans. the winners of that game 
I get to play in Croke Park, Park yeah. the week before Christmas. Yeah, so it's 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 a it's a good setup that they have it like that 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 you do get to play in Croke Park because you know there could be some unbelievable games there. Like I mean, Port Arlington against against um, against Lomans or Gary Castle yeah. or Port, against Port Leash. You know, d- d- has a great ring to it and. You know, there'd be no quarter given or taken, and then yeah, yeah. get into a, 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 a semi final in, in Croke Park. Against right? probably the Dublin champions. Yeah, which yeah. would probably be killing Croaks. Croaks, I'd yeah. say, or, or St. Jude's, but more than likely Croaks and, and the series firepower there. But it's a, it'd be a great chance to, to, to yeah, play in Croke yeah, Park. Yeah, yeah, it's the week before Christmas. I'd say some of the poor supporters, we could have Janet and Naylor is up in Croke Park dressed as Santa or something the week before Christmas. And I'd say put that thought into their head, they'd only love that. Um, anyway, that's, you know, we're, we're a split, a split, um, split vote. We're going for Port Arlington. It seems to be famous last words. Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about the junior final. Suppose we had enough money that week, I'd say, to last them with Chris. He used to have this um, saying for us, arse to Mickey, arse to Mickey, arse to Mickey. <laughs> you do know that I played it right here, yeah? They're for not that old team. <laughs> <laughs> I came up to Dunn's Film Station and I bought a 99. I got back to Dunn's Station and I had the, the flake in all in it. <clears throat> so I said, if I can't stop me, just he'll never stop me. And I have a 99. <laughs> so I was eating that coming along. So then I got to have it was gone. So I had to buy another one to have it It got me, it got me far as far as I call it. So I, I regarded it was fairly safe. <laughs> from, from You're listening to the Talking Sport Podcast with Leash Today. Right, uh, Barrow House and um, Barrow House and Ballyrone in the Ballyrone Abbey to give them their proper title in the junior football final on Sunday as the curtain raiser. Uh, someone joked to me. Obviously, we're here in Joe Mallon Motors for uh, um, to, to do d- this week's county final preview, and uh, I said we're, we're proud ambassadors for for Joe Mallon Motors. But among their other brand ambassadors is Anna Geary, and I interviewed Anna Geary this week on a separate. You'll be able to listen to that podcast. But someone joked to me, "How come you got to interview Anna Geary and Alan got sent to Barrow House?" <laughs> so, Alan, you were down in Shan. Is that how you pronounce it, Shan? Ganamore Primary School, Ganimore National which is in School. Yeah. 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 So tell us about your visit to Barrow House. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to remember the last time I was there. Hard place to get to. It, it could have been ten years ago. The last time I was there, I, I, I can't remember. I remember being at matches in Barrow House, but it's a long time ago. So they've actually lovely facilities. Unbelievable yeah, facilities. Really, yeah. Really do. So, like, there was 112 kids in the primary school. Every single one of them decked in Barrow House jerseys and Barrow House tops. So, like, if, if all of them stay going, <laughs> they'll have a fair dynasty coming in. in the, there was three players there, uh, TJ Burke, uh, Mike Martin Murphy, and uh, Dara Phelan, the goalkeeper. So they Dara Phelan Martinez's son, is he? I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they G'd up the, the kids, uh, wound them up to the last, and then let them back into the classrooms for the, for the teachers to do it <laughs> for the rest of the day. But like, there's great old excitement out there, plenty of flags up yeah, there. Yeah, loads of flags. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, it's just look, it's a small rural area. Um, they're down junior now. You, no, they relegated a G and then got relegated the following year. Yeah, right? they're down since about 2018. So yeah. the last twen- last quarter finals in 2019 and 20. Yeah, and they're in the, in the early 1990s. War, the war, yeah. 19, and they were serious senior in the 80s as well. They won, they've won intermediate a couple of times, yeah. Yeah, so like yeah. they're, they're Neighbours yours, Billy. Wouldn't yeah. be a place you'd be in very often, though. No, it's sort of it's, it's sort no, of off the beaten it, track, it's isn't it? It's ten or I suppose it's ten, ten or eleven kilometres from Ballymyler, yeah. but um, uh, yeah, it's look, it's a real small area down there, and they've, they've a real, the real small pick, and it's a real tight knit community. It's right up again a tie, I suppose. In a tie parish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, they've they've had some great footballers down through the years. It's I probably they're, they're probably junior just because of because of their numbers, mm. you know. But they're a very proud club, and you've the McDonalds down there. Tio is still playing. He's probably forty-two or three. <laughs> a bit like um, um, uh, our guy from uh, from Park the the halfback Langton. He's uh, he's he's an ever present on the on the Barra House team. Um, and they've, look, they've, they've some good footballers on it, and they, they had a good win in the semi-final against George. Th- Martin and Fergal Murphy are brothers, are they? I don't know the hard yeah. you know, And, and their yeah. brother is a Joe. Remember Joe Murphy, the pet, who was one of the best footballers, pound for pound. Remember Joe, the yeah. Jews play? Yeah. 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 yeah I think he's, he's broad, I think. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, broad, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but Joe and Martin are definitely brothers. Fer- and Fergal is, Fergal's about 21, and he's been excellent um, this year for them. They've got through a couple of lads, like, and every and they have a succession of fellas coming now mm. over the next couple of years. Which, which Had five lads on that Nafino Oak mm. minor team this year, and they were all fairly good. Yeah, no, they, they do have to have a clatter them coming where, when they hadn't produced for a long time. Like Lee Day is another guy who's come into the team in the last couple of years, done quite well. Um, they have a lot of injuries at the minute. Right. Like Emmett Malone is is out injured, cruciate again. Um, one of the Baldwin twins, whichever one is J- not playing. 
James, uh, I think, is yeah, he, yeah. he done the cruise shit as well. So there's the few injuries. Like they're good, they're really, really mm. good players. Sir Emmett Malone was with Leash for a number of years. Like he wouldn't be wouldn't be far off county standard if he was fit. So they do have injury problems yeah. that they've had to contend with. So to get to the final, I think last year Port Leash, yeah, but Port Leash and Joseph's two, two good teams yeah, to get to the final. Yeah, yeah. And like Joseph's were intermediate. Both those teams have been intermediate in yeah. recent years. You could, so. you could you could say that that Joseph's team was had a, had a ring to of an intermediate uh, about. Uh, about a team about it. Um, they were very, they were very strong in places like Dan Dunn and, and um, uh, Peter Keeley and all yeah. were playing for them. So they, they were, they, they were quite impressive in the first half um, against St Joseph's, and St Joseph's really dominated them in the second half or second quarter of the second half, which would be the third quarter. <laughs> 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 and uh, they just couldn't <laughs> score, so um, they uh, kept me uh, knickers in the twist here. <laughs> Get my, um, uh, or, but yeah, look, they had a good, they had a good win uh, overall up in Critty Yard the last day, and I, I was at it, and, and they went. And wild, your pal spoke to the team, and yeah. uh, there's. He's a great football brain, and he's a, he's a, has great experience as well. And there there'd be no airs or graces with Sean. He he loved him going. Yeah, a very well rated young coach, like. Yeah, he is. He's in with Leash under twenties now, and and he would he be as he good as you now? Talking about, would, about, about, about would he be as Barrow good a coach Hammers. or manager as you now? No, I think he gets a lot of his his uh, <laughs> his, uh, his, uh, his, his um, know how his know how and his guile from from watching okay. me and say. <laughs> 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 Highly unlikely, <laughs> but uh, he won't like me talking about Barra House. But um, I suppose Bar- B- Ballyroan would be favourites for the match. Yeah, okay. Do you, do you think so? Yeah. Well, the farm lines are interesting. Well, Ballyroan beat them already. Yeah, Ballyroan beat them already, and also um, and a knock beat Barra House, didn't they? No, they didn't. The no, no, they no, got beaten by Barra House in the league. Yeah. But I w- I'd read nothing into the league. That was during the summer. Lads were on holidays and that and crack. I wouldn't. And a knock by all accounts, really could have beaten Ballyroan mm. the other evening. Like they were up at the second water break and just kind of ran out his mm. team and a lot of lads injured. Um, now, Ballyroan, I think when they played Barrowhouse, they lost. Since then, they've lost Conair G. He went mm. up to play senior with Ballyroan. But they have got back in some lads who were hurling, like mm. Fiona and Mahoney, um, you know, is now eligible to play on this team who, who wouldn't have been there. So that's pretty much a, a like for like swap. Um, yeah, the Barrowhouse lads were keen to make sure this morning that I was stressing that Ballyroan were the favourites. Okay, the I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't fall for that type of crack. <laughs> so but just, just on Barrowhouse again, and we're coming back to th- their grounds are unbelievable. I know they're still operating sort of out of a prefab type uh, dressing room, which is a clubhouse and gym and everything. They have a playground in their pitch, which I think is just the best idea ever because it brought so under you seven. You can watch the match and, and, and the, the kids, kids at the exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or else when you play the under seven matches, you play the match. They behave for the match because the playground is there afterwards. I think yeah. every I think every rural club should have a playground in their pitch. I think it's just genius idea, and I believe they're expanding it. I think, and it's a class playground as it is. I know you, you don't want have young children, so playgrounds aren't on your agenda. No, <laughs> It'd dodgy if you were hanging it's around not. playgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But Bally Rowan, I, I just th- I just think th- this junior championship has been um, a shambolic thing in the group stages. But but I think there's about six or seven teams at least, of a very even standard. So Ballyroan bet on by two points. Barrowhouse bet Joseph's by three points. So they're all in around the same in, in semi-finals. Like, our lads, only, our lads lost to Spink, uh, and not lost to Spink. Uh, Joseph's done barely bet Collection. You know, they were f- fairly tight. And I think the Harps aren't too far back, and then Port Leash. So I think, had, had the Junior Championship been an eight-team championship with two groups, rather than the way it was, yeah. we probably would have had no, a great series of games and results go in every direction. Um, but our house lost the game against Ballyroan. It was like a half-two on a Saturday. I can't remember what, there was some reason it was played at that time back. It was a funny time back, but the weather, it was a real glorious day back probably eight, six, eight weeks ago now at this stage. Um, I think Barrowhouse won this junior in 2015 and uh, they, they bet the heat in the final in Moor Park. I think it was a Friday or Saturday night game and they brought a massive crowd to it and they made a huge noise in that. I think they'll bring great atmosphere to the first game on Sunday. Yeah, and they, will, and they were the same last week in, in uh, Critty Yard. They, yeah. they had the stand full and that. And uh, you know it's great to see for them. But I was just reading on the on one of the, the, the reports that like but Ballyroan have have an awful lot of under twenty players mm. that would be very strong like Loss yeah. and Obular and and uh, Macquies and that that you know there's a good there's a good uh, display of scoring from those lads in the under the under twenty they're really flying. Just so if they a hammer court with Emo under twenty last week, yeah, yeah. A lot of them are available for the for the junior as well and uh, nearly in, in, in many other clubs they'd probably be playing senior so they have a really really good spread of players Ballyroan and and they'll be very fast and nippy and uh, provided the weather stays stays. Uh, and if the weather is to be decent enough, like we're not yeah, looking they, too bad, yeah. They, They'll be they'll be um, they'll be flying from the off. I'd say yeah. Ballyroan. They'll also have no fear of a more park because a lot of them will, will have won two minors over the last couple of years, so that won't oh, phase them. Yeah, yeah. Won't phase them in the yeah. They'll be used to being. I in think it's there. sort of important. 
decent enough game for Ballyrone and that like I know they got a bad beating in the senior, but like they've been winning minors, um they'll obviously go hard for the under twenty this year. But if a lot of those has to win a county final in Moor Park, like it does absolutely no harm whatsoever. No, you know, like all, no. it, 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 it is their second team, but it's it's I think the, the club could do with that, like you yeah, know. they could, and particularly after the the last day that with the senior, there's so many younger players and that that you know anything that they would win would bring them on because they're going to have a good senior team over the next couple of years, and and that would bring them on. Uh, yeah. uh, definitely. Are, are you both going for Ballyrown in that one? Well, I I, I'm delighted to say I picked them out at the start. Of you the did, you did, and way before <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, way before the <laughs> ball kick. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, I'd stick with them. I will. I, j- I just think the the younger lads that they have will have no fear of being in the more park. Even the older fellas, like so, and they're not even that old. Like so, Jamie Whelan and Rory Dunn, like they've all played senior for a long time. Mm. Ron as well, and they probably that team, if it gets reconfigured a bit next year, you could have MJ Tierney, Scott Conroy, even McMahon, maybe even down mm. there. So that that they could easily improve. Um, so I will stick with Balleron yeah. you go on you go on Balleron oh, although I, I'd like to go for the neighbours I, I'd, I'd be shot Arnie MacDonald would shoot me if I went for, yeah. went for Barra House but I'm going for the favourites who are strong favourites <laughs> Balleron so. I'm going for Barra House I'm not buying you've, be, you've been you, you've a lad pulling your strings there I know that's the case was Arnie was in the school today Arnie MacDonald yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the yeah, great great characters great uh, the kids had them wound up to the 90s <laughs> they make as much noise as they did there yeah, I think morning. that was, a, that was a, a very naive mistake on behalf of Shangana Morris School to bring the you and the crowd in on a Wednesday. When, when I go to place to go on a Friday, so and it's nearly the week is over. But like wind them up to the last and uh, on a Wednesday is a bit. Uh, but Arnie is a great character and uh, plenty of crossover between Clean and Barrett House. Yeah, there is the well, McDonald's there. Like, yeah, there'd be Arnie, Beano's cousins, aren't there? Arnie would be and Theo would be first cousins of being on. And yeah, Peter and Barry and all those guys. Yeah. So look, they've a great tradition of football down mm. there and and. Uh, it's in the genes, I suppose. It's in the so genes <laughs> in the water, yeah, yeah. The adults produce great G- least GA people over the years and uh, plenty of friends down that neck. It was actually invited me down numerous times to do things for them down there. I emceed a couple of different events for them and that. It's like, there's more roads coming in and out of Barra House. It must be around five or six ways of getting in and out of the place. Like, yeah, it's, there's uh, a couple of ways of getting out of it as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's down beside the barrow, so it's a yeah, yeah, neighbouring yeah. parish, and they'll yeah. be, they will yeah. be flying. For the bonfires for there Sunday evening. The if they they win. Will, certainly will be if yeah, they yeah, win. Yeah, anyway, I'm going for Barrow House. You, you two, who are you going for Ballyron? I'm going for ba- Ballyron on a technicality that I won't <laughs> be able. To, I, can't, I can't blow. I can't blow uh, Barrow House up at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Look, uh, that's we'll be back later. We'll be back on Monday um, to to go back over the to rake over the calls of the weekend games. So I want to thank Joe Mallon Motors here in Port Leash for hosting it. I want to thank our main podcast sponsors, which are Boot Concrete. Uh, Anyone lo- looking for slabs of concrete or blocks or anything, uh, can go to Boot Concrete. Anyone looking for a Clee or a McGann or an Arcana can come to Joe Madden Motors. But I want to thank you all for listening. I want to thank Billy and Alan for joining us. I want to thank Ross Malloy, who has uh, produced this particular episode. So uh, over and out. Good luck. God bless. Goodbye.